Hey there, I'm Soundy, and this is how to make a 2D top-down RPG in Unity. Welcome to episode one, basic world building. In this tutorial, we'll be setting up a project, importing a spreadsheet, and exploring the basics of how to use Unity's tile map system. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is open the Unity hub, and we're gonna select 2D URP. Yours may be further down, you may have to download the template, it's really small, that's fine. URP, by the way, is the universal vendor pipeline. Nine times out of 10, this is the pipeline you're gonna to wanna to use. It's just how Unity handles rendering everything for us in the background. It's packed with some great features to make your games look good, and it's very performant on most platforms. We're gonna go ahead and name our project. I've gone with RPG Tutorial Series, and then pick a suitable location and hit Create Project. Okay, so now we're inside the Unity Editor. Let's go ahead and set up a few things. First, we're gonna want to create a folder structure to keep everything organized. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder to contain all of our game assets that we'll be making. And this is underscore game underscore. The underscore here at the beginning means that it'll appear first in the list. The reason we do this is this root folder here of our assets folder will be populated by any assets we import through the Unity Package Manager and sometimes it's not possible to move those. So over time, this can become cluttered and we can't reorganize it to suit our needs. So instead, we circumvent that by creating our own root folder for which we'll be working inside of. We'll first drop the global settings asset for the render pipeline into settings, just to keep it organized, centralized. We'll go ahead and drop both of those folders into our game folder. And we'll now go ahead and create a couple more. I'm gonna create a folder called core. This is something I do for most, if not all of my projects. This is the core logic. So stuff like high level game management systems, scene transition systems, audio management systems, anything that's sort of agnostic to the game itself, but is more concerned with managing the game at the highest level. Uh, this is perfect for the settings folder to go inside. Scenes can stay here. Um, we'll be using this a lot. So if we come inside here, First, what we'll do is rename our sample scene to be Hometown. This is where the player will start and will be the sort of base of operations. Um, by renaming this, by the way, it will prompt you to reload the scene and then it'll change up at the top for you. So finally, we're just gonna create a world folder. This is gonna contain all of the assets that are gonna be used to build the world. So this might be stuff like all of the tiles we use to build up the terrain and any kind of buildings, um, maybe interactive elements too might come here. So it's a nice container for us. And by the way, my folder structures tend to go by system or mechanic at the highest level. Um, and then within it, I go either subsystem or sub mechanic. And then eventually I'll subdivide my folders into asset type. You may have seen that in other tutorials where they divide by script and sprites. So here, the world's gonna be made up of different biomes. So our first biome we're gonna create is the forest biome. And inside of here, we're gonna now subdivide by asset type. So first, we're gonna need some sprites. So let's go ahead and make a folder for that. And let's pop over to itch.io. Here, I have found us a great top-down tile set. It's clean and minimal, but also communicates nicely that this is supposed to be a cozy top-down RPG. So I really like the look of this. I'm gonna include a link to this in the description below and a link to the creator as well, who um, has some various socials for you guys to check out. So back in Unity, we can download that asset pack and go ahead and import that. Once you've downloaded it and unzipped it, you'll find in there a file called Top Down Base Tiles, and this contains all the tiles for the world. So we'll go ahead and bring just this one in for now, and we'll now set this up to be used in a pixel art context. So for that, we're going to need to disable compression and set the filter mode to point. This keeps it nice and crisp and avoids Unity automatically trying to blur it um, and losing out of those pixel art qualities. Next, the pixels per unit, we're gonna set that to whatever the artist has made this. If we just pop back over to the page, you can see 16 by 16. So we'll go with that. 
Um, if you're unsure about this, just experiment to see what works best. Usually it is the tile size, so it'll be either 16, 32, 64, or 128. And finally, we're going to set to multiple. This is because in this sprite sheet, there are multiple sprites, and we're going to want to separate those out. So let's go ahead and hit apply, and then we'll hit the sprite editor button here, and we'll take a look at the sprite sheet. We're going to want to slice this up. I like to do grid by cell size. In our case, again, 16 by 16. Hit slice. And then you'll see here Unity's gone ahead and oh, Unity's gone ahead and sliced this up for us. So it's all, all nicely done. Some of these maybe a little bit too subdivided, but to be fair, this just gives us more room to play. Sometimes we can repurpose um, sprites from one thing to another. So it's good to have that versatility. So go ahead and hit apply now, and then Unity will package those out for us into the asset. And we'll close that window down. So let's set up our hierarchy now for the scene. For this, I like to keep things organized again. So I like to have separators. So I'm going to create a new empty game object. By the way, I use Control Shift and N to do that, or you can right click create empty. And then I'm just going to tag this with editor only. That stops it from um, being live in the in the world. Uh, this is purely to keep things separated. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a container object again with Control Shift N, and this is LCA, stands for Lights Camera Action. I'm going to go ahead and drop our main camera and our 2D light into this container object. Again, this is purely to keep things organized; doesn't have any impact. So I'm going to create another one for the world. And inside of this, we're going to go and create our tile map. This automatically creates at the root, so we're just going to drag them in there to get it organized. Now, our tile map consists of a grid, and our grid consists of many different tile maps. If you think of these as layers, as you might find in Photoshop or Paint.net, um, these layers stack on top of one another and form a well allow us to form the world by layering different um, layers of geometry or sprites even. So here the first one we're going to want is a water tama um, as the base and then we're just going to use Control D to duplicate that and we're going to have the ground on top of the water and then Control D again and then that gives us the vegetation layer. Um, the vegetation will sit on top of the ground. And the reason we want to separate these out is because if we try and layer sprites on top of one another all on the same tile map, then they will overwrite each other and we won't be able to get the nice layered effect that you would otherwise want. So we've got our tile map set up. So let's now go ahead and create some tiles. So first, what we're going to want to do is create a tile palette. So we need the tile palette window. So with your grid or any of your tile maps selected, you'll see we get a button appear to open this window. Now, if this isn't available up here for whatever reason, so for example, if you are just not clicked onto it or not clicked onto anything, you won't see it. You can go window, 2D, and then tile palette. So I like to dock this over here next to the inspector. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new one, but we're going to need, again, a couple of folders to hold these things. So I'm going to go with tile palettes, and then I'm going to go ahead and create another folder to store our tiles. And within this, we're going to have several different types of tiles. So first, I'm just going to go with standard, and then I'm going to go ahead and create one for the rule tiles we'll be making, and finally for the animated tiles, which we'll be getting to as well. So if we jump back out there, and then go inside tile palettes, and then our first tile palette is just gonna be called forest in keeping with this biome type. We don't need to change any of these settings, they should all be fine. So we go ahead and hit create, and you'll see here we're inside the correct folder. If we weren't, we could just navigate that down into tile palettes and select folder. That's gone ahead and created this for us. This asset here allows us to control some global settings about the, pa the palette, which can be really useful. 
So with the palette being made um, and active in this list, we can now drag sprites into here to form tiles. So if I go and get our sprite sheet, bring it over, it's now asking us, where do you want us to store these tiles? So these will, for the most part, just be the standard tiles. So we'll go tiles in standard, and then we'll let Unity do its thing and build out these tiles. So with that made, we now have the ability to place these in the world. So in order to do this, first we need to make sure we're on the right layer. So the active tile map for me, for my first one, is going to be water. I'm going to go ahead and find some water that I like. So this one in the middle here or in the middle here, just any blank water tile that we, we can find, we're going to use to draw out our water for the game world. So instead of using just the brush tool, which just draws it in as you would expect with a brush, I'm going to go ahead and swap over to the painted to the fill the box tool and just drag a nice big box there for us. Now it's getting a little difficult to see what's going to get rendered. So instead of having the game view be over here, I'm just going to dock it down here so we can keep an eye on what's going on um, through the camera's view. Um, as well as through the scene. So I'm just going to control S religiously through this, just in case, you never know. Um, next, we are going to go ahead and draw a little island using these tiles. Now, the way they're configured at the moment makes it look as though you can make lakes. But if you just invert your thinking here, we can instead use this to create a little island. So this tile here will form the bottom. Then this tile will form the left edge, this one the right, and this one the top edge. And then the corners will be made up from this piece. Okay, and then we'll just find an empty grass tile. Um, there's a couple in there, and we'll just paste that over there. And now we've got ourselves a small island to work with. Now let's go ahead and populate this island with some grass tiles. Um, we'll use just a couple here, and then we'll put maybe a plant and maybe a flower there too. So you notice that when I placed this flower, it overrode our ground, and that's because I've forgotten to switch to the vegetation layer. So let's just quickly fix that. Let's go ahead and erase those from this layer, swap to the vegetation, and then just quickly repeat that. Now you notice here straight away, the vegetation layer isn't showing up. Okay, and that's to do with the order of these layers. So the order here, we can manually type this in. A higher value will display in front of a lower value. So the ground is at layer zero. Now if we go ahead into the negative, we can actually um, hide things behind one another. So the ground hasn't gone in the sense it's been deleted. It is still there, it's just behind the water. So a better way of doing this is with sorting layers. So that we can try and keep things a little bit more organized. So let's go ahead and set up a couple of those. Now the way this works is the smaller the layer number is the lower the priority if you want to think of it like that. So this layer here that we're making now which is ground is layer two with two being slightly higher than one. This means the ground should display above the water and then we'll go ahead and create one for vegetation. Now we may revisit how we've set this up later on, depending on how we go along and what we need to build. But this is a great start for now. So let's just set this ordering layer back to zero and instead we're gonna use the sorting layer. So we're on vegetation, so we'll assign the vegetation. Now straight away, you'll notice these have gone black and this is to do with the fact we're using URP, which by default assumes we want 2D lighting, which we do because we can make some cool effects. So here we'll just tell the target sorting layers of our 2D light, which is the global light that affects the whole scene. We'll just tell it, hey, go ahead and affect all of those layers for us. So just heading back now to configure the ground, we'll go ahead and set this back to zero, and then we'll add the ground sorting layer, and with the water, we'll add the water sorting layer. And now, if we want to avoid the mistake we made last time, we can come up to our tile map settings up here and instead of none set it to tile map. This allows us to see what is on each layer. 
Now you'll notice here that the water is ubiquitous and it's all the way through. And then the vegetation is just these two tiles here. So we can now add in these just to make that look nice. And because we've used this overlay to help us, we can see that we're not placing things on the wrong layer, right? If we were on the ground layer and we we're placing things over here, we'd immediately be able to recognize that these things are on the wrong layer. We can use Control Z, by the way, to undo any placements that we've done that might have been a mistake. So with that, we've now successfully created a tile map and we've got all of our sorting layers set up. So if we go ahead and hit play, we'll see, well, Nothing should happen because we haven't animated anything or made anything that can move, but the game does in fact run and everything is in fact rendering in the correct order. So that's how you use Unity's tile map system to do some basic world building. Next time we'll be exploring how to use rule tiles and animated tiles to simplify the world building process and bring it to life. I'm happy to take requests, so drop whatever you'd like to see more of in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this, snipe the like and subscribe for more game dev adventures. Cheers, guys, and see you next time.